just uh, mm-hmm. ah there we go uh, um uh, no. dr nikolov is a professor and he's associate chair in the department of chemical and biomolecular engineering at the university of houston and um uh, i think uh, yeah he has also got a joint appointment as a professor in petroleum engineering um is over 30 years of r&d experience in computer aided systems and uh, he has also graduated a lot of phd's he has consulted extensively in industry and is named in several patents um he joined the university in 1997 and prior to that he was a tenured professor at uh, uh, Texas A&M and also was a visiting scientist at MIT. Dr. Nikolov uh, comes in with a diploma in uh, uh, and uh, from Greece and also a PhD from UCLA both in chemical engineering. With that uh, let me uh, let uh, Dr. Nikolov uh, you know start his uh, presentation. If you have any questions kindly type them in in the chat box and um, we will try and then take them and then answer them one at a time. Okay? Very good. It's all yours. Hello, everybody. Uh, thank you for uh, joining us uh, this Monday morning. Uh, in the next 30 minutes, I'm going to share with you some things we have done in our uh, research over a number of years using what people in general call data analytics. And there are other names like machine learning, artificial intelligence, deep learning, and many other terms that people use so that they can describe essentially a collection of methods that are borrowed from a number of disciplines, uh, most notably statistics and computer science and mathematics uh, with uh, all kinds of engineering applications. Uh, I'm going to talk about a number. Can you see my cursor moving, by the way? Uh, yes, uh, you, you okay, can uh, hit the down arrow and it will move to the next slide. Great. So as I'm pointing... Uh, uh, yes, we can uh, see that. You, you can see that. Excellent. So I have collected these topics here on which I'm going to just mention what we were able to do with uh, methods from data analytics. I'm not going to take time to explain how these methods work or um, any details of that nature, because this is something for another discussion. But you will get a good idea what one can accomplish, why it might be useful, what kind of insight you can get. And a uniform message here is that it's not just crunching numbers or getting answers, but it's also about getting insight, uh, insight to problems, to systems, and all kinds um, of um, issues that appear in the energy industry. So you can do all of these things, like I said, with data analytics to monitor, predict, maintain, etc. a system. And let's go to our first topic here, which is just decline curve analysis. It's something that petroleum engineers know very well. You have an asset, you start producing, production is going to decline, especially if you have a gas, a natural gas asset. Uh, you almost, especially shale gas, you almost immediately have a decline. And the question is, how is that curve going to decline over time? Well, there is this famous equation and many other variations and permutation of the equation because it's not just simple gas de production decline. You may have on occasion two-phase flow. You may have other issues in the uh, reservoir. And the idea is if I have data over the green period, can I extrapolate production over the yellow period? So I can see what recovery I can expect. The idea that we proposed is this, rather than taking ARP's equation, which is a meaningful equation derived from fundamental mass balance and some assumptions about how pressure is reduced in a reservoir, you can do something that is of this nature, namely take lots of wells and take their production and then what people call principal component analysis, namely express every production curve as a weighted sum of two, three basic profiles. And then if you have data over the green period, fit that linear combination by selecting the parameters and then boom, you can extrapolate over the rest of the production line. Red line is ARPS here. The black jagged line is unsmooth principal component analysis. You see that it falls spot on on the production data 
Uh, same thing you can do for all kinds of assets. We have analyzed all kinds of reservoirs in Marcellus, uh, Eagleford, Barnett, um, with data that are real data. And this, this is the kind of results we get. Red line is the standard equation. Uh, black line is the approach we are proposing. So it's one that is based on data. And you can tell, of course, that if you have more and more data from the green period, if you have proceeded with some production, you're going to have better and better and better and better predictions for your uh, uh, future uh, production and the ultimate recovery. That's the big message here. Uh, you can uh, get all kinds of statistics like confidence intervals, which become better and better as you get more and more data to start with. And you can do all of these uh, things, again, purely using data. There is no fundamental equation that was used to develop this. The next variation of that is to try to predict uh, future production just from the initial point of production using additional data from well for configuration, fracture configuration, and perhaps the first initial, not perhaps, uh, certainly the first production point. We use an approach based on a sim similar ideas uh, here. And again, it's all of these variables that the feature as inputs to our model, do the training, and we do something called partial least squares. It's just like least squares with a twist, so you can avoid uh, the problems of collinearities. And that's what happens when you use the so-called one principal component, rather a latent variable or one component, two components. The prediction becomes a little better until you reach a point where the prediction becomes worse and you find the sweet spot. Same idea here, slightly different problem. Predict the blue line from the first initial point, knowing all the data that I mentioned about how you constructed, how you completed the, your well and how you constructed the fractures and everything else. And you can take all that, put those in uh, plots so that you can get not just numbers, but also insight about what are some important variables in your analysis. There are various metrics you can use so you can analyze that. Let's move on to the next one. We all know that uh, natural gas has contributed towards uh, lowering greenhouse emissions. If we burn natural gas rather than coal, it's about 50% less. However, if there are leakages from either the production site or transmission lines or any other place, you may have problems of greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, methane is 30 plus times more potent than CO2 as a greenhouse gas. Not to mention, it can also perhaps uh, have, have migration to the whole water horizon at higher levels if your cementing of the well has problems. So the idea is how can you tell that your cemented well is going to uh, withstand stresses and changes and all that over the years um, um, with reasonable certainty. So the idea is that there are all of these variables affecting the integrity of a cemented well. Now, people who do each one of these tasks know how to do these things very well. The thing though is that those are um, interrelated and they all affect the integrity of the well. So how can we take all that into account so that we can tell whether a well will perform well or not, whether there will be leakages or not? Um, you can take data, the cement bond index, you can take evaluations and do it by applying a technique called PLSDA that stands for partial least squares discriminant analysis. You can put all the data in, train your model, and then test it on data that were not included in your training. You can catch about 80% um, of the remaining wells quite well. So it's pretty good. And in addition to that, there are two interesting things coming from this analysis. One is you can tell what are some important variables. You can rank them like this. And the ranking is something that people in the field uh, are not surprised by. They know their material and they know what is important. It's a reassuring thing that the analysis agrees with intuition. But in addition to the intuition, which you can also get in using different tools like the latent variables plotted in a 2D plot and um, very fine or uh, predicting that these wells are different from the rest and then giving you guidance to check on these wells. And you can also tell what variables contribute to preventing leakages or not preventing leakages by using these plots. You get also recipes and rules of thumb in 
We showed these to our industrial collaborators and of these bullet points, all but the last one were obvious. The last one was turned out not to be obvious. And after people thought about it, they figured it, yeah, actually that makes sense. That's what we do, but we had to think twice because uh, there was a sweet spot rather than high or low where we need to be so that we can have the best outcome. So this is the nature of this analysis, not just numbers, it also provides insights. Let's go to another topic, which is on maintenance. It's about electric submersible pumps. You all know what those are. They are expensive, the most expensive item in artificial lift. Um, and I think it's the second most common. Uh, it looks something like that. The idea is the pumps may trip or may fail and trips are not uncommon. And if a trip happens, you need to go check why it happens to restart the pump, make sure it doesn't uh, trip uh, too quickly again and so forth. Is there a way to take data and just anticipate those trips so that you can send somebody, send a message to somebody in a truck with their cell phone on so they can, you can tell them, go to that area, check this well and check this pump. Well, there are actually lots of reasons why that might be needed. Here is from the GE website, uh, all the reasons, well, most of the reasons why the ESPs could create problems. Um, there are these kinds of failures and these kinds of causes for these failures, any one of them could create a problem. Um, we are not claiming we can anticipate every single one of them with precision, but what I'm saying is rather than using just one chart with one variable to tell whether a trip is coming up, we can focus on all of these variables simultaneously. Uh, there are two dozen bullet points here, and we can check whether a, a, a trip is about to occur in the next few hours worse or not. So the analysis, you might guess, uh, involves some sort of stat multivariate statistics. We can do PCA and its variants here again to predict, diagnose, and prescribe perhaps some preventive or corrective action. So I'll show you here results from analyzing real data. This is normal operation. You use your model. You create um, the normal operating zones. And here there are zones of abnormal operation. So everything had to be in the green zone. Once you get points in this 2D plot outside the green zone, you start suspecting that something is about to happen. You see that the process was originally here and the red dots went all the way around until eventually you had a trip here at this point. The trip was well predicted way ahead before it happened. Um, in way ahead here, it's uh, of the order of hours, which gives enough people, enough time for people to respond to that uh, preventively. Um, so here are more examples of uh, trips, uh, namely points start going outside the red zone, the green zone, and eventually you have the trip. And you can use additional statistics with a single number. If you are in the green uh, zone below that line, everything is fine here. You have, once you exceed that line, eventually you have a trip and another one and another one and another one. Um, and not only that, as I said, you can also look at what contributes most probably to that trip, or you can look at uh, what variables are likely to in need of correction. Here you get this one. For example, everything else is pretty much within its zone. This is a way out and these are way out, the motor current A, B, B, C, D. So this was a motor driven problem. There are problems that may be due to other uh, issues such as uh, these pressure related issues. Um, again, same plots. Uh, so in summary, that's the procedure to describe, do real time analysis, use the diagnostics to determine important factors to monitor and check what needs correction after something has happened. Um, moving on to another problem, classifying shale gas wells. Why do we need to do that? Well, we have a bunch of wells uh, we have here a dozen wells, so we need, they all need attention. And we need, we're just looking at how they produced and we check which ones are in pretty much the same mold and which ones perhaps need additional attention. Uh, this is work that uh, um, my student Shrimoyi Bhattacharya did years ago. It was one of the first applications of this idea in the field, actually. Uh, so same story, you take your data, oops, let me go back. You take your data, you do the principal component analysis, every well essentially 
produces like a weighted sum of two, three basic profiles. You analyze the profiles, you look at these and you say, you see that well one, well three, and well two are different from the others. They need some attention because something is happening. Who knows, maybe they need to be completed, maybe they need to be refractured, maybe they need other things. Uh, you'll see that. And you can analyze this again uh, by looking at these basic profiles, like I said, oops, too fast, sorry. And, and you can see what contributes actually to these um, uh, similarities or differences by looking at the variables that you monitor for your well. Um, Finally, one project uh, that recently uh, Fahad Alvarda with collaboration with Professor Economides has been working on, uh, it's uh, machine learning and data analytics for estimating ICIP and other properties uh, from hydraulic fracturing treatment follow-up data. Uh, we, uh, I'm happy to report actually that Fahad qualified, he, he won the regionals and he qualified for the final competition in the national meeting, which will probably be virtual, but we'll see anyway in this, this coming fall. So the idea is this, you get data uh, and you need to answer these questions, what, how, and why. Um, the issue is of course, something that is known to petroleum engineers. You have your hydraulic fracture and treatment and you have the pressure profile where you have increase until you reach the breakdown pressure, then pressure goes like that reaches, there's a steady state which may be more prolonged here. And then you shut in the pumps or the well and you have the shutting pressure and the closing pressure for the reservoir. And you want from this part of the curve here to estimate parameters such as ICIP or friction factors or other things. Um, there is a well, uh, developed method that is fairly manual in nature. So uh, in estimating these parameters, the ICIP, as I mentioned, the um, instantaneous shutting pressure as shown here, you can do it by hand by creating such curves. For example, you can go here to this curve and take the blue dots, which are the derivative of the green, uh, uh, the red curve rather, take this tangent here, um, at this point, I see where it intersects the red line and that can be used to estimate uh, these parameters. Rather than doing this by hand, by eyeballing and saying, well, that's where I draw my line and all that, Fahad came up with the idea that I can take lots of these curves and by taking lots of these curves, I can essential, essentially establish a linear model that says pressure fall of data give me a value of ICIP, for example. Now, there is a complication here that makes things a bit more interesting because in addition to the standard fall of curve, you have something called water hammering, which is what happens when you have flow rate uh, of a liquid and you suddenly stop it by closing, uh, by shutting in the valve and disrupting the flow rate. So you see these oscillations, you can barely see them here or you can perhaps see them here um, after Fahad um, has removed the averages from these lines. So there are clearly oscillations which uh, are not directly related to the ICIP or friction or the parameters that we want and the, they may actually prevent us from applying the idea that we mentioned here of taking that line and the black line and finding the intersection point with the red line. Uh, Fahad applied two approaches. Um, I'm not gonna have uh, time to talk about the second one, but in his first approach, he took the data, he did some sort of principal component regression or partial least squares, he applied both techniques, and he found that you can actually get pretty good agreement between what you get manually and what you get by applying the automated method, um, essentially by applying machine learning, you let the machine do that for you. But in, in addition to seeing well inside the well, uh, this analysis provides a more interesting insight, namely, if there are discrepancies between what the machine uh, provides and produces and what the human produces, who is right? 
um, and why is there a discrepancy? So Fahad has been able to get additional insight uh, from this and to actually uh, uh, tailor his technique so that it can be insensitive to situations that uh, would uh, be prone to errors. So uh, the, one of the lessons, some of, actually two here, um, of the lessons learned uh, in this analysis, which is fairly universal, um, it's that, uh, first of all, the automated analysis can really help humans avoid having to complete uh, relatively mundane but sophisticated tasks uh, that would have to be completed repetitively. So rather than doing this every day, all day, for lots of situations, you have the machine do, the computer do that for you with a very good robustness in the outcome. And in fact, it turns out that sometimes the machine actually exceeds human judgment and it can be um, even more precise in generating uh, outcomes that the human eye might perhaps miss. And the reason why the human eye might perhaps miss those things is that if I may go back, uh, let me, do I still have control? I, I think so, one second. Okay. Um, oh. To the previous slide. Okay, it's going forward. It, it, it's okay. It doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Okay. All I wanted to say is that in in um, in taking a fall a pressure fall off curve that has the water hammer oscillations, one tries to to filter out the water hammer oscillations, and then for the filtered curve, one takes the derivative, and then after plotting the derivative, one has to take a slope of the derivative. So essentially, one tries to estimate second derivatives from real data. That's not an easy task, even for the human eye. It's fairly demanding and fairly elaborate. So with that, I believe I finished my presentation on time. So <laughs> I can give you enough time to ask questions. As I promised, I didn't go uh, into the house or the details at all, because I didn't want to bore you with the questions and calculations. Um, Stephen uh, Hawking actually famously said when he was writing a brief history of time that every equation you include in a book for the general public cuts the, the readership by half. So <laughs> I refrain from using a single equation. Well, maybe one with ARP's equation. So with that, um, I'll, I'll stop and I'll uh, leave the floor uh, open for questions. Maybe now we can... Uh... We can stop sharing and uh, then open it up for questions. Do you want to stop sharing, Mike? Uh, do I have to do it from my end? Okay. Uh, yeah, I think it is yours. Me. Yeah, there it is. Okay. And uh, okay, very good. So questions we have. So it says, uh, will the data be provided Okay, one second. Let's start from the beginning. Please request permission from the meeting host. Okay. Um, let me read some of these. Uh, and uh, it says, this is from McPaul. It says, will the data be provided in the data analytics upstream program? Uh, I think I can answer that. Uh, we are planning to work with some real data sets. And uh, since there are lots of different kinds of data that one can analyze, we are going to use some typical ones, but they are real data, so that we can illustrate to you how the data analytics part of it is done. Uh, so we'll give you a little bit of the, um, what, how the data analytics part of it works, how do you massage the data, how do you clean the data, and so on. And then for that, we will use uh, three sets of data. They are all publicly available, but they are uh, real life data. One has to do with seismic, the other one has got to do with the uh, uh, production data, and then the other one has got to do with the drilling data. So we use three different examples uh, so that you can work with them as well. Uh, but in the class, they will show some sh uh, snippets of data that, you know, which may be not the full data set so that they can explain what they are trying to do. 
Uh, another question, uh, how long is the program and when does the program start? Uh, I will uh, uh, quickly answer it, but then go back. The program, uh, if you really take, uh, we have it in terms of batches. Uh, so I'll hold that question and show you a couple of slides on that. And then it says, what data is, uh, well, the data we provided. Okay, we took care of that. Then there is one, uh, do I need to know something, uh, some coding to be a part of this program? The way we are trying to offer this program right now, you do not need to know coding. Uh, we will use a very simple uh, computer program called Orange, and uh, there the coding is quite easy. That will take you through the first belt, which is on the basics of data analytics. The second belt, which is the silver belt, actually teaches you Python programming and uses that to do, and also R, to really uh, teach more techniques that you can do. And uh, let me see the next one. Uh, do I need to know some coding? Okay. Uh, will the program cover all these topics? What will we gain after taking energy analytics program. Will we be working with any project during the program and be able to solve problems like this? Um, this is the first uh, introductory one, which will last for um, six weeks. Uh, the first two weeks get you one badge, the next two weeks get you another badge, and then the last two weeks get you the final badge. So uh, will we be working? Uh, will they cover all the topics? Remember, we are going to be talking about, this is introductory, getting you all kinds of things on uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning, all of that you will be exposed to. Applying it to more and more complex one will come in the second and third belts. So Dr. Radha, may I? Uh, yeah, please um, go ahead, yeah. So, this is Dr. Shastri, who's going to be also teaching the program. So let me just ask him to answer that. Go ahead. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah. Hi, folks. Uh, thank you, Dr. Nicola. It was an interesting presentation. And from computer science side, I can see how these algorithms can be uh, used in oil and gas. It was pretty good. Uh, folks, uh, while Dr. Nicola uh, Nicolo was uh, presenting, I was noting uh, all the topics that we are going to cover in the class. And the most of the topics that he discussed, such as uh, cross-validations, k-means, PCA, uh, linear regression, we are going to cover all these topics in the, in the first batch. Uh, I hope I answered the question. Um, let me, I don't know whether we have uh, uh, Leon Venugopal online, but if he is, then we can also ask him uh, something. Carl, let me ask you, uh, Dr. Shastri, is there any experience or subtopics related to reservoir simulation? That I'm, I'm not sure. I think Kalyan may be able to answer that. Yeah, I have a feeling that, uh, if I'm not mistaken, we're going to be covering it in the silver belt and not in the bronze belt. Mm -hmm. uh, can uh, I register? In, okay, sorry. Uh, in case of programming, uh, for the first belt, we will not have any programming. Uh, if you don't have any programming background, you will completely fine. You you will survive and not only that you will thrive in the course because the tool that we are going to use it's uh, orange it's called visual programming where you don't have to write programs you can just drag and drop modules create pipeline and then pass your data through the pipeline and get the analytics done but for the second belt uh, we will cover python uh, and that uh, uh, that again assumes no programming background so we'll start from uh, uh, very basic things about how to write programs, how to write loops, and how to declare variables, to we'll take Python for data analytics. And for the third belt, it's I believe it's about a deep learning. That's where we are going to have, dive into more uh, higher level concepts of programming and tensor flow. Uh, if I may that. also add a oh, Go ahead, somebody. Yeah, yeah, please. Yeah. So, so I was just, just going to say that, uh, it, it, it's a very rich program, as I saw it. Uh, it covers a quite um, um, impressive array of methods. And I didn't show, I, I had to pick and choose in what I showed here so there could be some coherent theme and some uh, continuity in the presentation. And as uh, 
as the Shastri mentioned, there are lots of tools covered in the course. And once the student masters some of the basic ideas, there are ideas, for example, about reducing dimensions that come in various flavors, or there are ideas about capturing nonlinearities in regression and classification and image processing and all kinds of signals. So once one gets around these basic concepts, then um, uh, one, a student can even um, learn on their own after the course is finished additional techniques. There are lots and lots and lots and lots of those around. They may even develop those techniques. And the kind of coding that is required here is not so much hardcore coding of a method per se. It's about uh, assembling pieces, like I pick this routine from here and this routine from there, and I combine it with this R module, and I create this technique so I can solve my problem. So uh, there, there is some programming at later stages of the program, but as I understand it, it's of the nature of um, assembling mo modules together, which can be very, very productive. couple of more questions. Uh, somebody just says, can I register for the second badge after finishing the first? Certainly, you can take each badge uh, and then pay for it and then register. Uh, but when if you just did only one badge, uh, then uh, it is uh, $600 for the first badge. And uh, if you took all three badges together, it works out to be $500 per badge or a total of $1,500. Uh, but you certainly can take one. And if then if you decide to take second and third, we will give you back at the $1,500 rate. Uh, somebody had said that they are from Mexico and they, would, uh, they did go to school at UFH. They were wondering whether they can register for this. Uh, certainly, if you're on the same time frame, but what we would like you to do is uh, you know, register, send us your resume, because we want to make sure that your background is appropriate for you to take it. Uh, we would like you to have had some courses in, uh, in the upstream business, uh, some understanding so that uh, when the examples are given, uh, you have a good understanding of them. Uh, so send us your, you know, register, send us your resume, and then we will uh, uh, let you know within 24 hours whether you are admitted or not. Uh, if there are some exercises, it is better that each person is using his own data. Uh, certainly, if you have your own data, uh, Dr. Shastri encourages you to use them and then do them. And uh, in fact, after you have done them, you know, over the weekend, if you can come back, they will give you some feedback and some insights. Okay. Can I skip the bronze belt and directly go to the silver belt? Uh, Generally, for people to go into the silver belt, you need to demonstrate that you have enough understanding because these uh, belts build on each other. So the first belt gives you a good background on, as Dr. Shastri said, many of the key concepts of data analysis, like principal component analysis, things that uh, Dr. Nikolaou talked about, how do you reduce the number of dimensions, uh, remove collinearity, and so on. So all of that, if you can demonstrate that you have done that, then we, you can certainly. So which means you need to share with us what, what you where have you done this, and to convince us that we you can now you can go directly into the silver belt. Is this program a busy program? I'm taking summer courses. Should I apply for this program, Dr. Shastri? I will defer to you. Well, uh, the definition of busy is very subjective. <laughs> so. Uh, I'm not sure, but uh, definitely you will have to spend at least six hours in class and then probably a few hours outside the class. So uh, I would say if you can budget about 10 hours per week, it should be. Okay, so what I will do is uh, there were lots of questions on the, the program itself. Uh, I thought uh, if I can share with you, um, you know, uh, a few slides quickly to go over that. Um, I will ask Lauren to give me control so that I can share. Lauren, can you give me control? Uh, you should have control already, Dr. Rada. Oh, okay. For some reason, it says host disabled participation screen sharing. 
Um, oh, try again now. Okay, thank you. Very good. I'm able to do that. Um, so let me go ahead and then share uh, these slides. Uh, the more, whole purpose of this one is to uh, really go ahead and then uh, uh, give you a quick background on uh, the the program itself. Uh, first of all, uh, it is uh, the program is about upstream energy data analytics. So all the examples are taken from upstream. The data portion of it is generic. However, application is uh, is in upstream uh, part. It is offered by, by the you know, UH Energy uh, at the University of Houston, and it is in collaboration with Next, which is a Schlumberger company. And uh, so we did not have on the call, um, you know, Kalyan Venugopal, who is the training manager for Schlumberger. He will be one of those who is also teaching the course along with Dr. Shastri. And we have several guest lecturers like Dr. Nikolaou. Okay. Designed and presented by leaders from industry and accomplished faculty, we talked about that, offered through a structured micro-credential badges. This is uh, what makes it even more attractive. Uh, you take in bite-sized portions, which we call as badges. To earn a badge, it is about 15 hours, contact hours. That's what you spend. So in this particular way, we have arranged three times you meet a week, each time you meet for two hours from six to eight in the evening. So, and uh, that is one week. The next week you do the same thing. That is 12 hours. There is three hours that you spend uh, between the weekends to really do some homework assignment as well as work with your own data. Okay, program provides the necessary data science skill sets and uh, it's a proper blend of data analysis, hands-on experience and applications with the real world examples. So people who finish this first batch, you are at a point where if you just got yourself a job where you have to apply some of these, you would be able to get started. I will not say that you will be an expert, but you certainly are, you are on your way to becoming one because there is more things that you have to learn, which we offer in the silver belt and in the gold belt. So who is, uh, you know, who, who would be, who should attend? Uh, those who are currently in the industry or in transition, uh, it will enhance their capabilities to get deeper insights. If you remember, Dr. Nikolaou pointed out that when you do all of these, what you get is a lot more deeper insight. Um, he showed an example where there were lots of variables. Industry said, yes, I, they, are all, they all make sense. They also had one which they had not thought about, but it just said it makes sense. So it provides some deeper insight. He also showed you examples of how, what are the weightage of different ones? Which ones are more important and which ones are less important? Uh, so you will be able to do, deal with that and it helps you to make better decisions. And that is the key. You are utilizing what you learn to make better decisions. So if you are a student uh, in, uh, and have got a background and want to skill yourself up, uh, then this would be an excellent course to take. Uh, ready to apply a practical skill set in data analytics? This certainly would be a differentiator on your resume. So both kinds of people can take that. And uh, so in the bronze belt, uh, we start that on, uh, there are some questions on it, start on the 20th of July, and there are three badges. The first one uh, walks you through. A badge is 15 hours, that is two weeks. So it runs between July 20th and July 31st, and there you learn about data processing, how do you clean data, get them ready, and then how do you do some initial you know, learning algorithm so that you can really put them into machine learning format. The second one is, uh, is again two more weeks, data modeling, and these are how do you model and evaluate the model, how well it fits the real data and so on. And then we also teach a little bit about clustering. And then the last batch, which is again two weeks, is on alternate machine learning algorithms. So if you really think about the first 
in a batch, you are really going to get a good dose of how do you prepare your data and how do you analyze it so that you can really develop some models that you can teach a machine so that it can do that on its own. And that goes back to what Dr. Nikolov said uh, about the fact that once you do it, what is very routine and needs a lot of exercise, not that it is, you know, cannot be done time consuming and can be very, uh, you know, boring and that you can leave to a machine to do. All classes are virtual using Zoom. And so you know, if you have a good, uh, you know, uh, connection and also video uh, computer with a video screen, then you should be able to participate without any problem. So last slide, how to join. Uh, please, there are individual badges. We talked about the, uh, the price involved in those, but if you took all three badges, it's 1500. If you took the first badge and thought that's all I want to do and say, I want to take only one badge, you pay $600. But then if you decide to take two and three, we will give you the break so that the sum total of all three badges is $1,500. We have more information on the uh.edu on energy. Please go there and take a look at that. And if you want to apply, uh, this is the uh, one that you go to. Again, if you go down to uh.edu slash uh-energy, you should be able to find about this program. While you are at it, I would also add that we have another program on a very similar structure. Uh, that has got to do with sustainable energy development. And that starts one week later. And uh, it is about lots of, uh, you know, the world is trying to move to a different set of uh, uh, energy sources so that we are a lot more, we can leave the world a better place uh, than what we have made out of it so far. So a lot to do with uh, uh, how do we make the transition from currently fossil-based economy to one which would be a lot less dependent upon fossil, but also certainly one even there is anything to do with fossil, it has got very little impact on the climate. So please take a look at that also, very similar structure, and that starts one week later on July 28th. So if you want more information, please do sign up. Uh, the last day for signing up is on the 15th of this month, uh, which is another three days that you have. And uh, so please do, once you send in your application register, we will, uh, you're asked to fill out a very short uh, details about yourself that will help us to evaluate whether you will fit into the program. We will do that evaluation, and get back to you within 24 hours, and then you can pay your fees and then you will be registered. Recognize time is a little short, but we encourage every one of you, if you have not already applied, to take a serious look at the program, and then please do apply in time. So let me open up any other uh, questions that people have. Okay, so there are two. Uh, are these courses, uh, uh, is this a busy, okay. So next question from Joseph was, how often are these courses planned as of now? Um, you know, this is just, uh, again, I would uh, try to share what, uh, what we are planning on right now, uh, depending upon how many people sign up on the first one, which looks quite, you know, reasonably good right now, we will probably offer the same course sometime in fall, okay? But not you know, right away, but we will offer it later on in fall. Uh, which type of certification am I going to receive after the program? Uh, when you finish all three bells, you get a certificate. It's a digital certificate. And uh, so you can put these badges or the certificate on uh, your digital resume, whether it is on LinkedIn or anywhere else. And lots of companies recognize this. In fact, this is becoming more of the norm and uh, people recognize, you know, seen it, they understand it, and they recognize it. Whether you will get actually um, any kind of course credit for this in uh, University of Houston's course, uh, we have not crossed that bridge. No decisions have been made. There are a lot more things that one has to work out. 
So at this point, all I can say is, you know, you will have to deal with it and the, with the individual professor at that time. Uh, can you share a full description of the topics to be covered per week? Uh, we certainly can do that. Uh, if you are interested, uh, as you register, please uh, go ahead and then say what are the things or send an email to UH uh, Lauren. What is the general email that they should send it to? I'll, uh, I'll post it in the chat. Okay, she'll post it in the chat. If you send it there, we will send you uh, a copy of what will be covered. What are the top different topics covered in each of the lectures, okay? I know it is uh, about four more minutes than we had planned, but uh, if you have questions, we'll be happy to take them. If not, uh, I would really like to thank everyone for joining in on this uh, webinar. And uh, please look out for things like these. We do plan to offer periodically a short one on uh, application of data analytics uh, in oil and gas industry. So please look out for those and, uh, uh, and join them. In the meanwhile, I'll also look forward to seeing many of you back in the course, if not all of you. Thanks again and have a wonderful day. And thanks Dr. Nikolov for taking the time to really you know, talk to us. And thanks, thanks, thanks to Dr. Shastri, okay? Thank you folks. Yeah, thank you all. Bye-bye now.